Okay, well, I'm going to come out here and check on the aquaponics tank. Some great things about aquaponics uh, are that um, even in the dead of winter, which it is right now, uh, even if you have no land, uh, you can grow um, an abundance of food anywhere. I mean, if you have a spare room or you have a... Um, uh, a, a room like I have out here in my barn, or a little office I where I keep my books, and I come out here and do some work occasionally. Um, I I do a lot of things out here. I got an incubator right here, and I'll uh, incubate some quail eggs, and I'll brood them out here. But I do grow a lot of food out here too. Uh, behind me is a fish tank aquaponics setup, and uh, you know the only reason I really set this up uh, this year was because. Uh, we have some fish from our pond, as you can see right there, and uh, they're just goldfish. Uh, they're nice, good-sized goldfish, and uh, we have a little backyard pond, and usually they're fine in there. I'll, you know, I'll throw a little heater in there to keep it from completely icing over. They're fine. I thought, you know, I think I'll put them in a tank this year and bring them in the house and not uh, put a heater in the pond. So I did that, and I thought, well, if I've got them in here, why not build some uh, an aquaponic shelf? And it'll filter the water. And it'll give us some vegetables. And uh, I've really been kind of surprised at how well this thing has done. Now, we've had aquaponics for about four years, uh, three or four years. We've had an aquaponics tank outside. Uh, it's an IBC tote. It was a chop and flip design. Uh, they work really well. It's grown a lot of food for us. But I never built one indoors. So this was kind of a new experience for me. So what I want to do uh, in this video is just kind of show you around the system a little bit, how it works tell you a little bit about it, maybe some things that I would probably do different if I was designing it again, which I may at some point re redo it, um, but uh, point you to a blog post ultimately. Uh, I wrote a blog post with a lot more detail, a parts list, um, you know, and kind of like how and, and why you would do aquaponics uh, indoors. So, uh, but for this video, I just want to kind of give you just a brief overview of the system itself. So let me just flip this around and we'll get started. Okay, what we have here is a three shelf um, aquaponics system. We have sump tanks at the bottom. We have, of course, the fish tank over here. And I'll just show you a little bit about how this functions. Now, down here at the bottom, we keep the pump in this uh, sump tank. But now we, I put these in here, and those are um, levelers. Uh, they're just PVC pipe, and the pipes go all the way down close to the bottom of each tank and what you do is you fill those full of water kind of kind of hold your hands over them and you flip them upside down and stick them in the water and it creates a siphon that stays as long as the water always stays above the ends of those pipes so what that does is it regulates these two tanks uh, as the pump pumps water out of this one it'll pull it from that one if it goes back into this one it'll push it into this one so they just kind of stay level they it's not real super fast acting but this thing can pump and pull down pretty quick and it will keep up with it uh, so anyway here's our pump down here and again I'll, if you need more details pump sizes the parts things like that all that stuff will be in the blog post and you'll find the link to that in the description below this video but it comes up here and this is actually called a chop uh, two system the chop stands for a constant height one pump one pump and it's two mean that means the pump pumps in two different directions so it comes up and this side goes to the fish tank this side goes to the grow, grow beds on this design. So it comes over here, and then it goes to a manifold uh, that I made out of PVC. Pretty simple design. It's just a just a few pieces of, of PVC, PVC pipe. And you see that we have the lines going to, um, let me back up here a little bit, lines going to each bed. So each bed has its own hose going up to it. And, uh, and then there's ball valves in uh, each one of these lines so you can regulate the pressure. And the reason those are there are simply because these lower beds obviously get more water pressure than the higher beds because that pump has to pump that water up higher less volume goes up there but by closing these valves here partially it'll force the water pressure up and uh and fill the, the top bed evenly so that way we get a good flow all the way up now talk a little bit about these beds here these are from menards they're a um, i think they're called a, a multi-purpose tray a lot of people call them cement mixing tray uh, work really really well for this kind of thing and what you do is you just take uh 
Let me see here. I got a, I got one up here that I messed up on, actually. Because I bought an extra one and I actually messed up on it. Let me just kind of bring those down here and show you what I got here. Ah. And the reason you see why I messed up on these, I put these too far apart. I wanted them actually closer together uh, so I could put a coffee can around them to keep, you see there inside there, there's a coffee can around that to keep this grow medium from uh, falling into the, uh, into these bulkheads here. But these are bulkheads that you just drill and install. Like I said, you want them about just far enough apart to where they fit next to each other, but will fit inside something, you know, roughly the size of that coffee can right there. So that way you can just put one. Now you can put them at each end of this. You can put one at each end and put two uh, cans or a piece of PVC pipe around it, like a four inch piece of PVC. And uh, that would work just fine too. Let me turn this around so you can see it. But you can see what it forms right here, something like this. Now these are threaded on the inside. So one of these, <clears throat> uh, the water will come up through that and you leave it flat. Now what you do is you take and you put, let me see if I can show you uh, the standing pipe. Uh, you put a standing pipe in one of them. Let me try to move this out of the way here without crushing anything. I think you can see it there. There's a standing pipe in the other. And what that does is, is it regulates the height of the uh, the water in the beds. You want that water to come up just below the top of the stone here, of the grow media. These are clay uh, balls. It's called hyd Hydraton is what a lot of people call it, which is actually a name brand. Um, but uh, you can get different ones that sell this and um, works really, really well. It's a good grow media. You can use things like lava rock or there's some other things you can use as well, but this stuff is, I think, the best. Um, but you don't want that to fall in there and you want the water to come up uh, just below, just below the surface of that. And, um, that way you don't get any algae buildup or anything like that. So that's how you do that with a standing pipe. Because when it gets to the top of that pipe, the water flows over that pipe and falls down. Well, then it goes, if you have a standing pipe in another one of these, it'll flow down. And you'll see I have like a hose coming down and I got it running through the top of that brick. That's just holding it in that... Uh, that right there you can see how it just drops down in there so the top one drops into this one that one drops into this one we get this out of the way and then that one drops into the sump tank so it'll drop into this side of the sump tank so basically that's your loop that's your loop from the pump to the manifold to the beds and then back to the sump pump uh, for that now when it comes out the other side it goes to the fish tank so let's talk a little bit about that uh, again, uh, you see I got just PVC, half inch PVC going up and then I put hose back there and then I put another uh, ball valve uh, in the line. And the reason I did that is again to regulate the pressure, the amount of water going to the fish tank for a couple reasons. One, it puts more pressure over here to make sure these beds get plenty of water. But two, you have an overflow and I'll talk about that in a second, but you don't want the uh, water coming into the tank to overtake <laughs> the uh, the uh, pipe coming out because uh, of course your tank will overfill and overflow over the top so you want to make sure that you know you regulate that enough to where it don't, oh, doesn't overtake this i've got it set pretty right i mean it, it's it drains pretty fast so it's not a big big concern but i think if i put that pump full force uh, into the fish tank it probably would overtake the overflow pipe now this again of course is called the overflow pipe and you see it's got kind of a crazy design this slides out i don't want to pull it out because i don't want to lose my siphon but that design right there is a uh, kind of hard to find i had to search youtube and the internet to figure out how to build something that would overflow the water back to the sump without drilling a hole in this tank because there's a couple ways you can do it um, you can do it without sump tanks and put your fish tanks at the bottom. Your fish tank actually becomes your sump. But then you get a lot of, you get a lot of up and down in your fish tank and you don't want that as you're filling beds. I mean, the water would probably go almost completely out and then back up as it filled back up. So the other way it would be to drill the, um, the fish tank, put, drill a hole in the fish tank and put a bulkhead in the fish tank toward it overflows. That would work very well, but of course you can imagine, imagine the risks there. Um, drilling a hole in the glass and how that could be a little complicated and cause some problems or you can use an overflow pipe like this uh, a lot of fish tank guys use these to do water changes on their aquariums which is essentially what's happening every time this thing cycles and we'll talk a little bit about the cycle here in a minute but um instantly when the water comes up to where the uh 
there's a uh, opening just like this. There's a T just like this on the other side. And on the inside, where it comes out down there to the pipe, uh, it's just like that on the other side, only a little higher than that. And it flows. And there's water down in here all the time, which keeps the siphon, which allows that water to flow when it rises above that certain point. So you have to have that. But in the... Um, the blog post that the link below uh, sends you to, I have the link to the video that I found on how to make that. It's super, super simple, actually. But, uh, yeah, you just it's something you need if you're going to make a design like this to have it flow back so it works, works perfect. You see the amount of flow difference I get from about there to there is about all the difference I get in the uh, difference of this uh, tank going up and down, which is very, very good. So, anyway, that flows back down. And I've just used three quarter inch on that to get a little bit better flow and three quarter inch pipe elbows down, drops into that tank. So now let me talk a little bit about the cycling of the pump. I have that pump set to run four minutes uh, every hour. So every hour it kicks on, runs for four minutes. That's enough time. I chose that time. I didn't just randomly pick it. I washed the beds and I let it go a few seconds past all the beds being full of water. So, um, that's about how long it took to get all the beds. Yeah, maybe it was like 20 or 30 seconds past the time uh, to get it there. And uh, that way we got plenty of water. And so this is full, you know, filling up for the fish tanks getting water put in it for four minutes. So you're getting a nice water change in that tank every, you know, four minutes every hour, which keeps that water just crystal clear for these fish. Plus it aerates it. It's just beneficial all the way around. It's clean water because it's been cleaned by the plants and the bacteria that's in the beds. I won't get into all the scientific stuff. Uh, you can read a little bit more about that in the blog post as well. But that's how all that works. Um, the lights, let me talk about these lights. These were really nice lights. They're not very expensive grow lights, uh, LED grow lights. Barina, I think is the brand on them. Really, really work well, as you can see. They got things just blowing up in these beds faster than I'm picking it, obviously, because there's stuff going to seed and flower in there. Uh, I haven't been eating out of it as much as I probably should. Um, but, yeah, they work really, really well. Uh, and I have those on for about 14 and a half hours a day. You could play with that. I think they probably do good at 14, probably. 13 and a half, 14. I, I got them set for whatever reason at 14 and a half. Uh, so off for nine and a half. And um, so that's a 24 hour cycle. And that, so we got two different timers. I got a timer over there that runs the lights. I got a timer under there that runs the pump. So that timer again, four minutes every hour. That timer, 14 and a half on, nine and a half off. So that's how that's working. So what would I do different about this system? Uh, let me flip this uh, back around. Okay, so it's a great system like it is. Let me get out of the shade. I got a lot of blocking the light. Um, it works great like it is. As you can see, a couple of the problems. One, this fish tank's probably a little bit bigger for the fish I have. So there's probably be some people that would complain about that. They're goldfish. They do take up a lot of, they do need a lot more space than people think they do. Goldfish take up a lot of room. But this is a temporary home for them. It was just for like three months, four months maybe. We have them in here. Yeah, I think if I do this again next year and pull them out, I'm going to try to get a bigger tank. That's a 30-gallon. I'll probably at least try to get a 55 to have them in here. So I'd probably want a 55-gallon tank uh, if I was going to do this with that many fish. I mean, there's like six pretty good-sized goldfish in there. They're not little. They're, you know, like pretty good size, And they do need a bigger tank. I agree. But they seem pretty happy and pretty content. And the water is just constantly being clean. So there's not really a chance of the water being um, too dirty for them or anything like that. Two. This shelf. I got this in Menards. I already had it here before I built this system. It's just a cheap plastic, like $30 shelf. Good shelf. Fine. Holds the weight just fine. But you see the issue. It's just not quite enough headroom there between the lights and the top of those beds. You need something more adjustable, something you can spread out the shelves a little bit more. Probably needs to be, you know, this tall for the three shelf system because yeah, these veggies are pretty crammed up in here. If I kept them cut down and picked better, it'd probably work just fine. Or just grew lower stuff. That chard there is growing pretty big. Green onions are kind of growing out the top. Um, the celery is great. Doing really, really good down here. But again, it's really thick. This chard's here, all right. Uh, rainbow chard is doing good. Spinach went to seed too quick. Um, the bok choy down here uh, went to seed really fast too. So 
Yeah, again, a bigger shelf. I would recommend you know uh, something you know definitely bigger, more space between the shelves. If you do that, there are actually uh, these here. You can actually get a bigger one. Uh, there is one that's uh, quite a bit longer and wider um, than these uh, pans here that would even make you in a better bed. Um, so you could actually have bigger beds even in your system if you went with a different shelf. Um, that's probably about it. You know, I mean, other than that, it works really, really well. I would definitely probably change those two things though. Um, if I'm setting it up again, which I might next winter, I, I probably won't run this. Obviously I won't run this during the summer. We got way too much going on outside. Don't need it. But if a person doesn't have a backyard, does, needs to wants to grow a, a lot of vegetables. I mean, you see, that's thick. You could eat off that every day. You could probably make a salad from that at least three or four times a week and just keep it going. Keep you know, keep things going on it, and uh, it's very productive. It grew really, really fast. Um, you do that and some microgreens, which I think I'm going to talk about in the next video that I'm going to record this in a few days that I'm growing in my kitchen. Between those two things, you could have fresh vegetables all winter. Um, so, uh, real easily and without a backyard or, or just in any, any weather. So I think they're worth having also not any work. I mean, I come out here every couple days and well, I come out here every day. I feed, I feed the fish every day. I'll throw a pinch of food in there to them every day. But there's no weeds to pull. Um, there's no watering. I add about five gallons of water to that sump about once a week. It's pretty simple. So fish food, sump pump, uh, or the sump tanks filled up. You know, it's it's really low maintenance system. So I think it's worth having. So I think it's all I'm going to say about it, other than just to say if you want, to, if you're interested in a system like this, or you just want to know more about it, and you think about maybe putting something like this up. Uh, again, I have the blog post that you can go to, uh, it has a parts list in there of what I used, but like I said, you might want to go with a bigger shelf system. You might want to go with the bigger pans. You might want to, you know, and then if that of course is going to change a little bit of the plumbing, it's going to change a little bit of your setup, but there's a parts list of what I've got here, um, in, in the show or in the uh, blog post, uh, with the link below. Also, um, uh, you'll get some more pictures and more description and a diagram of how this functions there. So check that out. And uh, thanks for watching and God bless.